Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. Well, a pedestrian is hit fatally by a car in Sea Pleasant this morning. It happened at the intersection of Central Avenue and Gentry Lane at around 7.30 this morning. Police found the victim near the roadway. The driver did remain on the scene. Prince George's police are investigating that incident. And Maryland hospitals have some of the longest wait times in the country. That was some of the expert testimony heard in the county council this morning. Council sitting as the Board of Health heard from health care providers on emergency room wait times. Council member Vice Chair Walla Blagay says her constituents told her about waiting times in the ER of taking several hours before being seen by a doctor. The session was held to address the problems and hopefully find solutions. One of the, the reasons as to why we're seeing more people coming into emergency room because they don't have other choices. The second thing we have to look at is, do we have emergency uh, uh, enough emergency room treatment days to take care of the patients that are coming in? Third thing is, uh, that ties up emergency room capacity is actually inpatient acute care bed capacity. Uh, patients are being admitted on average about 18 to 20 percent from most of the hospitals, depending on. Uh, and when they are, uh, are going to be admitted, you have to have a uh, bed upstairs to move them quickly so that you can free up that emergency room uh, treatment bay. And when you don't have that, you will have a back, uh, backlog in the emergency department. On the state level, a work group has been formed to address that issue. Well, Maryland has the highest rate of Alzheimer's in the nation. That's according to a new report from the Alzheimer's Association. The report finds that the disease is most prevalent in the East and that Maryland leads the U.S. with a rate of 12.9 percent. Statewide, the highest numbers are in Baltimore and Prince George's counties. Both jurisdictions hover at around 16 percent. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. More news in just a bit. Stay tuned. I wish people knew that when you live in a small town like mine, it's much, much harder to find friends with common interests, especially ones my age. I often feel really alone. Same here. Seems like every time we finally settle somewhere, I have to pack up and move again. By the time I make a friend, a real friend, I have to say goodbye to them. I totally get it. I live in a big city. But it can feel just as lonely. It's tough, but it gets easier. Honestly, I totally get what you're going through. It's nice to know that like you feel the same. You enjoyed my story. I really enjoyed your story as well. <laughs> Welcome back. Maryland's budget will go from surplus to deficit over the next four years. This according to the Department of Legislative Services, which says the projections are the result of discontinued federal pandemic spending. Analysts had expected hundreds of millions of dollars in surplus money for fiscal years 2025 and 2026. It is now projected that the fiscal budget for 2025 will start with a $418 million deficit. The following year, it goes to $572 million. Well, a plea agreement for a former Prince George's County Corrections Officer, 34-year-old Danielle Smith of Waldorf has pleaded guilty to conspiracy to possess and distribute legal drugs to a prisoner with whom she had a relationship. He, in turn, distributed the drugs to others behind bars. The drugs include opioids and synthetic cannabis. The operation went on from August 2021 to March of 2022 when Smith was suspended. If the court accepts the plea agreement, she could spend up to six months in home detention. Well, state waterways will receive new funds for the fiscal year. Governor Westmore announced $13.5 million for waterway projects last week. The funds will be used to support new and improved public boating access facilities. Officials say one of these projects at Jackson's Landing on the Patuxent River will begin in late fall. Their grant cycle, we had $29.6 million in application needs that were submitted to us and we could only fund 13.5 million of those. As far as the unfunded projects, which inevitably there are unfunded projects each grant year, um, those then uh, can be resubmitted the following year or the local government 
municipalities, the state or the federal government who own those project sites, they will have to fund those on their own. The Department of Natural Resources is now accepting funding applications for the next fiscal year. Well, more delays and cost overruns for the Purple Line, the Maryland Transit Administration is asking the Board of Public Works to approve an extension of a contract with Purple Line Transit Partners. According to Maryland Matters, the delay will push the opening back to spring of 2027 and add more than $148 million to the growing price tag. The project was originally scheduled to open in 2022. Well, as two metro stations reopened today, WMATA plans to close several more stations for summer construction. Metro is welcoming back riders to the Dunloring and Vienna stations today. These Orange Line stations were closed while crews worked to replace rail and install fiber optics. Beginning this Saturday, July 22nd, WMATA will close four Green Line stations, including Greenbelt, College Park, University of Maryland, Hydesville Crossing, and West Hydesville stations. The stations will be closed until September 4th while crews install fiber optic cables and replace platform edge lighting, among other things. And check out how dancing is healing the souls of some senior citizens. Lorraine and the Fabulous Hand Dancer started after the pandemic. They provide seniors with food, safety, and a good time. This venue allows senior citizens to have something to do. As most of you know, a lot of senior citizens, they don't have anyone to care about them. Some of them don't, you know, their families are too busy for them. A lot of them don't have food to eat. So the hand dancing outdoors and the hand dancing venues that are offered to the community is a, is a way to keep the seniors together. We love each other, we dance, we care about each other. Dancing is healing for seniors, it's healing for anyone. It helps the heart, and it gives you feelings of happiness, an organization like ours is an ideal situation because you get a chance to inter interact with a lot of people and at the same time enjoy your individual actions all the way through. I just enjoy what I do and I, I love dancing, I love good music, and I love to see other people act real crazy every once in a while. We have a good time. We really have a good time. And you can find Lorraine and the Fabulous Hand Dancers at Anacostia Park every Thursday from 3 to 7 p.m. Well, coming up, Simon Bugs with your Monday sports page. Stay with us. Hey, sports fans, and coming up soon, a talented MLB prospect gets promoted to the Bowie Bay Sox. Stay tuned. For serving up experiences worth savoring and sharing, for giving you great reasons to stand up and get loud for bringing you together over arts and crafts. You're welcome. And you're welcome to come see all that Maryland has to offer. This is Governor Westmore inviting you to shake up how you vacation. Listen, just go to visitmaryland.org and plan your trip. Our excellence is shining, yet so many of us are dying. Colon cancer is silently killing our people, our friends, and family. So screen, we must. We do this for all of us, from every corner, doorstep, and pulpit, period. The health revolution must begin. From diagnosis to death rates, colon cancer can no longer win. Ravaging black communities, colon screenings are a must. They're recommended for those 45 and up to pinpoint and treat the signs. If detected early, Colon cancer is treatable, 91% beatable. It's on us to understand symptoms and lower the risk. Join our team and get screened. It's time to take our bodies back. It's time to get healthy. It's time to stand up to cancer once and for all. Welcome back. As car thefts continue across the county, a local police department is handing out an important vehicle protection tool today. Boy, police are passing out free steering wheel locks to city residents who own the Kia or Hyundai. The giveaways at the police department's community information center and Bowie Town Center. Police say they have 200 locks to give out. Well, it would definitely, uh, one, deter uh, people from stealing their cars. Uh, we've had, you know, a lot of cars stolen throughout the county. And then also we've had, you know, people get their, their cars stolen repeatedly. So, you know, when the criminals are looking in vehicles, they'll see these steering lock uh, on these, these wheel locks on these, 
steering wheels and then they will continue on to somewhere else. Haven't, there hasn't been any problem in my specific neighborhood. It's only a matter of time and it's free. I was actually going to go buy one anyway. The giveaway lasts until 6 p.m. While well, a former president of Prince George's Community College is, College is appointed to the Maryland Higher Education Commission, Governor Westmore has appointed Dr. Charlene Dukes to the board, which is responsible for establishing statewide policies for Maryland colleges and universities, as well as career schools. Dukes, Dukes, who is currently the interim president for Montgomery College, has more than 40 years leadership in higher education. A car crashes at a hospital in Fort Washington over the weekend. It happened at the Fort Washington Medical Center Sunday morning. Investigators say the car crashed into a generator and the side of a sub-building that's detached from the hospital. Eight ICU patients had to be moved to a different wing of the building. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. going on everyone it's time for your monday sports page in baseball news orioles prospect jackson holiday continues to climb the ranks of minor league baseball as he was recently promoted to the Bowie bay Sox. holiday previously played for the aberdeen ironbirds and delmarva shorebirds before moving up to the bay Sox. and the 19 year old shortstop is happy to be with the team i came into spring training as this is my goal for the for the end of the year and uh, i've reached it so now there's there's new goals so who, who knows what can happen but uh I'm excited to be here. Holiday also touched on the skill he feels like he improved on to help him get to this point. I think whenever I'm, I'm making contact and I'm hitting the ball hard, it, it's at the, at the right launch angle where I can, I can get hits. So being able to kind of control that flight, I know I think we talked about that um, during, the, during the off season, but uh, obviously I'm not the strongest guy, so I can't hit it straight up in the air and hopefully it goes over the fence. So being able to just control where I hit the ball, and um, whenever I do, I'm hitting it hard. Holiday was the number one overall pick in last year's MLB draft, and he's the top prospect in minor league baseball. You can catch him and the rest of the Bay Sox in action tomorrow as they face off against the Harrisburg Senators at 635. And that is your Monday sports page. Simon Bugs, CTV Sports. Thank you, Simon. Let's get a quick check now on our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low near 71. Tomorrow, sunny with a chance of showers and a high around 92. Wednesday, partly sunny and showers, highs near 88. And Thursday, mostly sunny with thunderstorms and a high around 90 degrees. And now for the community calendar. Grab some popcorn with a blanket or lawn chair to see Darius and Nina fall in love on the big screen again. The classic film Love Jones will be playing at the Prince George's Parks and Recreation movie night. The screening will be held on Wednesday, July 19th, 7 p.m. at the Tucker Road Athletic Complex. The event is free and open to all ages. And that's our news for tonight. I'm Byron Scott. See you tomorrow night. Good night.